Welcome to episode 249 of Build Your House Yourself University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can make informed decisions and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. In addition to knowing about the different types of drywall that are best for different areas of your home, it's good to think ahead of time about the style and finishes you want on your walls so you're not stumped when your builder or drywall installer ask you if you want a level four or level five drywall finish, or whether you want any texture on your wall, straight square corners, or bullnose. In today's episode, I'll briefly cover whether smooth or textured walls are more popular for today's new builds, and if curved bullnose corners are still in style. We'll also cover the basics of drywall finish levels, so you can competently tell your contractor what you prefer. Let's jump right into the lesson with a pro term. The pro term this time is corner bead. Corner bead is metal or plastic material that's used on the corners of drywall. Corner beads are accessories that are installed on corners during drywall installation to make the drywall corners look neat and to make them less prone to denting and other types of damage. There are several different styles of corner bead available curved bull nose and standard square 90 degree corner beads are by far the two most common varieties. That's our pro term, corner bead. Remember that because you'll hear that in our mini lesson. So let's go a little deeper into the differences between bull nose and standard square corner beads. Your home's style and your own style and personal preferences should dictate the type of corner bead you choose. Both bull nose and square straight corners are still used most often in today's new builds, but standard straight 90 degree corners tend to be used more readily. Although straight corners are often used in traditional homes, these 90 degree square corners are also a perfect fit for more contemporary houses. In the vast majority of homes of any style, you'll find square drywall corners. They're easy to install, and they require less skill, experience, and time. Bullnose corner beads, on the other hand, were extremely popular in the 90s and early 2000s. And bullnose is still commonly used in certain regions of the country even today. Southwestern adobe-style houses, for example, typically have bullnose corners. People with small children might prefer rounded bullnose corners because they cause less pain and injury if unsteady toddlers or rambunctious kids run into them. Plus, those bullnose corners are less prone to chipping and damage as compared to straight corners. That's not only helpful if you have small children, but also if you have lots of people moving about your house because you entertain regularly or have a large family. The main challenge with bullnose corners is that it's difficult to transition from one paint color to another with rounded corners. And it's also harder to install window trim and baseboard with bullnose corners. And bullnose corners, or any specialty corner, are typically more expensive than standard square corners. If you like bullnose corners, but want an updated look, you might consider a more narrow profile. Today's bullnose corners tend to be more narrow than the very broad bullnose corners of the 90s. I've heard some contractors call those more narrow bullnose corners baby bullnose. Those are the two most common corner profiles, standard straight square corners or curved bullnose corners. There's another style of corner bead that I saw a few years ago in a show house in Tennessee. I had never seen them before and they really caught my eye. So much so that I considered using them for my own home, mainly because it was so different and eye-catching. That corner bead is called a chamfer corner bead. Chamfer, C-H-A-M-F-E-R. From what I've read, chamfer corners are most often used in commercial spaces. A chamfer corner has a flat face and is angled on the right and left of that flat face. In other words, a chamfer corner 
is a flat surface made by cutting off the very edge of the corner. Super hard to describe. So the best thing to do is to go to the show notes so you can see an example of a chamfer edge, as well as images of standard straight corner beads, the bull nose, and the baby bull nose. Okay, now that we've talked about the different corner styles, I just want to quickly mention the differences between corner bead materials. Most corner beads are made of metal or plastic, and there's no clear winner here. There are advantages and disadvantages of both. Usually drywall contractors strongly prefer one over the other. They may not even ask you which you prefer. If you feel strongly about having either metal or plastic corner beads in your home, ask what the contractor uses before agreeing to work with him. The advantage of metal corner beads is that they are extremely sturdy, durable, and long-lasting. Despite being more durable, though, if metal corner beads are hit too hard, they can dent. A dented metal corner bead often has to be entirely replaced. Another disadvantage to metal corner beads is that joint compound, which is used to cover the corner beads, doesn't bond as well to metal. So the joint compound might chip off when bumped, exposing the metal underneath. Metal can also rust over time, especially in damp, humid areas. That rust can potentially bleed through the paint, causing unattractive stains. Plastic or vinyl corner beads are not prone to rusting, and they're fairly easy to work with. Plastic is also more flexible. It works well along curved radius corners. However, plastic is generally not as durable as traditional metal corner beads. And sometimes plastic corner beads can crack or break, and occasionally they also can be dented. Lastly, there are also paper-faced metal and paper-faced composite corner beads, which are more expensive than their regular metal or plastic counterparts. Paper-faced corner beads can create a strong, smooth corner, but some contractors find the paper-faced corner beads more difficult to work with, and many don't have experience with them, so you may be charged more. Moving on to wall textures. The big question is, are people still putting texture on their walls today? The answer is yes. But overall, from what I've been reading on home building forums and from designers, most people want smooth walls. However, in some parts of the country, textured walls are the norm. Both smooth and textured walls are acceptable. In areas where textured walls are common, you'll most often see orange peel or knockdown texture. Orange peel texture is slightly bumpy and looks vaguely like the peel or skin of an orange, especially if you squint a little. Knockdown texture is like a heavier orange peel texture where the tops of the bumps have been knocked down or pushed down. There are several other textures available and different ones may be popular in your region. For example, hand-troweled textures are used more often in the West and Southwest, and in Mediterranean homes. Troweled textures are those that you sometimes see on stucco exteriors or interior plaster walls. Take a look at the show notes for several different examples of wall textures. If you want some texture on your walls, but aren't sure what to choose, ask a local real estate agent about what's commonly seen in new homes in your area, or stop by a local open house to see what's on the walls. Our eyes are often drawn to what we're used to seeing. So if textured walls are not a thing in your area and you add them because you love them, just realize that adding textures to your wall may turn off some future buyers. But if you love them, add them. Smooth walls are usually not a problem as far as resale goes, because if a future buyer wants to add texture to a smooth wall, it's pretty easy to do. In most regions, Textured walls are usually more budget-friendly. The exception here might be if you want hand-troweled walls in an area where hand-troweling is not commonly done. Smooth walls are commonly more expensive than textured walls because of the extra care and effort needed to produce a wall without bumps and blemishes. Not only does producing a smooth wall take more time for a painter, but also for the drywaller. 
That leads me to the last part of our mini lesson, drywall finish levels. You'll more than likely be asked what finish level of drywall you want in your home. So let's talk about it. Drywall finishes go from level zero to level five. The long and short of it is, the higher the level of drywall finish, the more steps are taken to hide and smooth out drywall seams, tape, fasteners, and corner beads. And when I talk about drywall fasteners, I'm talking about screws most often. As you may know, tape is used to cover drywall seams. And after the seams are taped, joint compound, sometimes called mud, is used to cover tape. Joint compound is also used to cover the fasteners and the corner beads. Higher levels of drywall finish look smoother because more joint compound is used and more scraping and sanding of excess joint compound occurs during drywall installation. Very well-lit spaces and those areas with glossy paint and smooth, non-textured walls require a higher level of finish. Heavily textured walls and surfaces that will be decorated with thick wallpaper can get away with lower finish levels. I'll give a brief description of all levels of drywall finish for completeness, but know that most custom homes will have either a level 4 or level 5 drywall finish in public areas, unless heavy wall texture is used. Now, a quick aside here. When your drywall installer installs your drywall, make sure that he leaves a half inch gap near the floor. This allows the wall and floor to expand without cracking the drywall. It also helps to prevent moisture wicking if the floor gets wet. What about those drywall finish levels? Remember, they go from zero to five. Let's start with level zero. Level zero is unfinished drywall. There's no taping, no finishing, and no corner beads. The drywall is simply attached to the wall studs. You usually only see level zero drywall in an unfinished home. Level one. Level one drywall is frequently used in attics and other areas not normally open to the public. All joints and interior angles of the drywall are taped and the tape is embedded in joint compound. In level two drywall, joint compound goes all over the drywall joints, interior corner angles, screw heads, and corner beads. The finish surface must be free of excess joint compound. Level two drywall typically goes on unfinished walls behind tile and built-ins. You can also choose it for your garage and other areas if appearance is not your primary concern. Level three drywall uses even more joint compound. Level three drywall is typically used where walls will have a heavy texture, such as a popcorn texture, or for walls that will be covered with a heavy-duty wall covering. This level of finish should not be used if you want your walls to have a smooth painted finish or if you want to use lighter weight wallpaper. Level four. Level four drywall has an even smoother finish with no marks or ridges. When complete, Level four walls will be ready for primer, followed by wall coverings, flat paints, and light textures. Gloss, semi-gloss, and enamel paints are not recommended over level four walls. And last, level five. Level five drywall is the highest quality, smoothest finish available. Joints, tape, corner beads, and fasteners should not be seen at all. In addition to multiple coats of joint compound over joints, seams, corner beads, and fasteners, a thin skim coat of joint compound is applied to the entire wall surface. This level of finish is required where gloss, semi-gloss, and enamel paint will be used. You'll also want level 5 drywall if you prefer smooth, untextured walls and on walls where extra lighting will shine. Level 5 drywall as you can imagine, is the most expensive option. Depending on how large your house is, level five drywall can add thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars to your new build. If you want level five drywall, but can't afford to put it throughout your house, choose a few special rooms for level five drywall 
and put level four drywall elsewhere. You can top the level four areas with a light orange peel paint texture, which isn't as pronounced as adding a spray on orange peel texture to the drywall itself before painting. Most spec homes without drywall texture will have a lightly bumpy orange peel paint texture. My current house does. Take a look at the show notes to see what I'm describing. Okay, say you decide you want to pay extra for smooth level five drywall. You'll also want to make sure the painter is able to apply your paint smoothly too. Otherwise, that upgraded level five drywall finish will look like level four drywall with a light orange peel texture. Yep, unless intentional steps are taken for a very smooth paint finish, your level five drywall can have a slightly bumpy orange peel texture, even if the drywall beneath is as smooth as glass. If you invest in level five drywall, you'll also want to invest in a painter who knows how to achieve a silky smooth paint finish. Ask to see examples of his smooth finish work and talk to past clients before hiring him if a very smooth wall is what you want. And you'll also want to talk to the drywaller to see what their level five drywall clients have said. You can also ask the painter the steps that he takes to ensure a smooth paint finish. Here are some things he might say. Number one, buy good quality paint. Number two, wipe walls down before painting to remove dust. Number three, strain the paint to remove air bubbles and debris. Number four, thin the paint with an additive to create a finer finish and a slower drying time. Quick drying paint is not what you want if you want a smooth finish. Number five, don't shake the paint. Use a paint stirrer instead. Number six, don't store or spray paint in high humidity. Number seven, if paint is being applied with a sprayer, don't spray out too much paint at a time. In other words, adjust the paint output so it's not too high. Number eight, thoroughly clean the sprayer before each use. And number nine, be sure the paint is completely dry before applying additional coats. Okay, that was our lesson. Let's finish up with a couple of quiz questions to review some key points. Question number one, true or false? Smooth, non-textured walls are more popular than textured walls in today's market. It's true, but it's kind of a tricky question. Smooth walls are requested in most custom builds overall, but in many regions, textured walls are the norm. Orange peel, knockdown, and troweled walls are the most popular textures in areas where wall textures are used. And number two, true or false? Bullnose corners are out of style. That's false. The type of drywall corners that should go in your home should be determined by the style of your house and your personal preference. The popularity of bullnose drywall corners varies from region to region. Although bullnose corners are not as popular as they were in the 90s, many homeowners today are adding them to their custom builds. Bullnose corners might be the right choice for you if you're building an adobe style house or any style house where you want the walls to have a softer look and or if you have little kids, a large family, or lots of visitors who might ding or be dinged by sharp corners. If resale value is a priority for you, choose corners and wall textures for that matter that are common in your region. It's true that standard straight corners are a bit more popular, but there's nothing wrong with choosing bullnose corners or even something completely unique like a chamfer corner if that's what appeals to you. I hope this mini lesson has helped you realize that there really aren't any truly wrong choices for wall finishes. Well, popcorn ceilings might be considered a wrong choice, but other than that, in general, you should go with what you like and what you can afford. That's it for me today. I hope you learned as much as I did, and I hope you'll join me again next time for another episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. 
That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.